top of our next page, we begin to consider a second type of titration. Suppose we have a weak acid and a strong base. Weak could be also weak base with strong acid, but with an opposite pair. Again, we consider the four components that are interesting on a titration curve. We would begin considering how we would calculate the initial pH. And again, if I think about what we're setting up, I'll do my best to draw a burette. And in it would be a strong base, something like sodium hydroxide. And it's designed to deliver a precise amount of uh, known concentration of base. Sitting underneath it is our um, Erlenmeyer flask filled with a weak acid, something like acetic acid or carbonic acid. With a weak acid, the initial pH involves a Ka calculation. For strong acid, it's negative log directly. But since we set up equilibrium with weak acid, it's all about the concentration of the Ka value as well. So with the um, weak acid, thinking about equilibrium, Hx, let's go of an equilibrium process of H plus and X negative. And we would say Ka is equal to the concentration of the hydrogen times the negative all over the molecular form of our acid, Hx. I know the Ka value if I know the identity. X squared on the top over the concentration of the acid on the bottom. When we solve for X, we can pull out pH. These are problems that we have worked all along in chapter 16, calculating the pH of weak acids by looking up its Ka value, x squared over the concentration of the acid, solve for hydrogen ion. So initially, as we begin thinking about the curve, that would be what it would look like. In between, and I guess, how about we come down here as well and kind of start thinking about that in place of the curve, we might as well draw it along. So let's say we're adding mils of st uh, strong base down here. Again, volume that's being added as we track the pH up here. So I begin with that initial pH, 0.1. Initial pH is found by using a Ka value. The next region of interest would be below the equivalence point, but past the initial point. So thinking that through, it's the area that I see is slow but steady climb as we're adding base. So it's between the initial concentration, the initial pH, and not quite yet the equivalence point. Knowing that when we have a weak acid with a strong base, we have salts that hydrolyze. Therefore, we have to not only the consider the concentration of the acid, but we have to consider its conjugate base that's forming on the product side, and it ends up to be a Henderson-Hasselbalch with a buffered uh, pH solution. So we calculate this as a buffer using Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. And we recall pH is equal to pKa plus the log of the ratio of base over acid. Since we're producing a conjugate pair, if one of them is a weak acid or the weak base, it ends up to be a buffered solution. And because it's being buffered, we start to see kind of a slower, steady climb. And there isn't that necessarily steep uh, view at the equivalence point. As with strong acid and strong base, it was significant, that steep climb. But it is not the case here, as buffers resist changes in pH, and that flattens the curve. The third point, I marked with an X, could be found and just stated as the equivalent point. That's when the equivalent amount of the conjugate acid and its conjugate base has indeed equaled. So that actually is equal to the pKa of our solution. When I skim this over, because the salt hydrolyzes, the endpoint is greater than pH of 7 units. Strong acid, strong base, at the equivalence point, pH equals 7. But because we now have to consider hydrolysis of the salt that's being produced, if I add a strong base to a weak acid, the equivalence point is actually over pH of 7. So a greater than 7 equivalence point is how I can determine a pH slope if I'm doing strong base with weak acid. And if I continue to add that strong base after the equivalence point, it's the base, then, that's in excess amounts, 
So in excess amounts, it's just the excess sodium hydroxide that's going to determine the pH. We do not use a Henderson-Hasselbeck, but directly calculate the excess amounts of base. Negative log of the hydroxide gives us pOH, and we flip it to pH. So considering what we've said, let's take a weak acid, H2H3O2, and titrate it with a strong base, NaOH. And if I think about the product side, we would come up with sodium acetate and water. A net ionic equation leaves together the weak acid, break apart the strong base, break apart the salt, and leave together the molecular water. Notice that the acid-base conjugate pair creates a buffered solution in the region between the initial point and the equivalence point. This is a buffered solution. And we have to use Henderson-Hasselbeck to determine the pH. The more base I add, the more conjugate base that forms. The less base, the less conjugate base. And that ratio of Henderson-Hasselbeck where we know pH is equal to pKa plus the log of the ratio of base over acid. That ratio of base over acid determines the pH in the region below the equivalence, but not at, not at the initial. Remember the initial is just an old-fashioned Ka problem. Products over reactants pull out X, where pH represents the hydrogen ion. After the equivalence point, in the fourth region, it's excess base. There is no equilibrium. The excess base ion is going to determine the concentration or pH of our solution there. So again, a little different below as we would calculate after. At the equivalence point, pKa equal pH. So to summarize what we have mentioned, strong acid and strong base is simply stoichiometry. The excess reagent determines the pH. If we have no limiting or excess, pH is equal directly to 7. However, if we have any other type, strong acid weak base or weak acid strong base, weak plus strong, we have to consider first the stoichiometry, then a Henderson-Hasselbeck. And I remember learning just in the buffer system, that's really nothing more than a buffered problem we had worked in the previous section. A weak acid at the equivalence point is equal to its Kb. A weak base after its equivalence is the strong base that's left over. So again, we're just repeating. If we have weak base after equivalence, we have leftover strong base. It will then be determined by using pOH. Let's examine, probably more meaningful is to give it an example. Let's go down to the very last question and consider an example. The first sample problem reads, calculate the pH of the solution formed when 45 mils of a 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide is added to 50 mils of a 0.1 molar ac acetic acid. Weak acid, strong base. Ka is provided for us, otherwise we would have to use Appendix D. So let's begin by getting a handle of the chemistry. NaOH is the strong base being added to Acetic acid, a weak acid. Strong base plus weak acid. On the product side, we form the conjugate base, sodium acetate and water. We are being told to place in 45 mils of the base with 0.1 molar solution. We are going to place that in with 50 mils of the acid, and it is also 0.1 molar in concentration. What would the pH be at this particular moment in time, a snapshot of this particular titration? Well, let's first figure out how many moles of base and how many moles of acid, so we can determine, do we have a limiting reagent, or is it perfect, straight on? 
45 mils times 0.1 molar can get us something called millimoles, but I like to just use mol molarity times liter to pull out the number of moles. So I hit 0 0.045 times 0 0.1, and I get 0 0.045 moles of our base. 0 0.05 times 0 0.1 pulls out 0 0.005 moles of the acid. Think of this in terms of millimoles of being 45 compared to 50. The perfect ratio is a 1 to 1 stoichiometric ratio. We have a 45 to 50. So therefore, we have excess amounts of acid, and the limiting reagent would be the strong base. So it determines how much gets used. At the end of our experiment, there is no base left over. All 45 millimoles have been consumed. And along the way, it consumed 45 millimoles of our acid as well. So 50 minus 45 would provide us 0 0.0005 moles of the acid left over. Point zero 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 0.0005, excess amounts of our acid. Now remember, this salt hydrolyzes it will also affect the pH. So at the beginning of the experiment, there was zero amount of the conjugate base acetate, but it gets produced to the same tune as the base that got used, 0 0.0045 moles, giving us, after the experiment, 0 0.0045 moles of the sodium acetate, or the acetate in general. Keep in mind, what we're trying to pull out is the molarity. The molarity is used in the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, and these are not equal amounts, so we'll have to consider that. We do an additive volume problem. If 45 mils of base with 50 mils of acid, the total volume is 0 0.095 liters for both. Also realizing since the volume of the conjugate pair is the same, we could place in the Henderson-Hasselbalch, the millimoles, or the number of moles, and still arrive at the same answer. It really is a choice that you could make. So I would probably choose to not divide by the total volume since the volume added there is the same.